Well, hi. <laughs> I hope everyone's awake. You want to be awake for this one. Let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, and pray, and then uh, we will begin our our discourse in uh, Revelation chapter thirteen. Let's uh, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you, Lord, that despite uh, chaos and um, unrest and all these things happening within the culture and within our world, uh, your word gives us focus. And with that, gives us peace. We thank you, Father, that our hope is not found within this life, but uh, it is found in Christ. We thank you, Lord, for the future and how even though it is bleak within this book, uh, there are glimmers of, of radiance and hope that we see throughout this text. I pray, God, that we would continue to be instructed and to be um, admonished, be encouraged, strengthened by your word. We love you so much, Lord, and give you due praise. For it's in your son's name. Amen. Hmm. Well, we have two more um, with the addition of this particular lecture. We have one more lecture until we're out of Revelation chapter 13. Okay. Uh, today, we are going to talk about the mark of the beast. We're going to spend the next two classes talking about that. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right into it because we got tons of ground that we need to cover. Just by way of review, again, putting ourselves in the mindset of chapter 13, always reminding ourselves of the details, John gives us images of what he sees in this particular chapter. And again, all of these images reflect back to uh, creatures or individuals um, that are seminal at this particular time period. That We don't have to debate about what these images are. We know what they are, because John dealt, tells them to us. First, we have the dragon, whom is known as Satan or the devil. Again, going back to Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, it is, he is described as such. We also see the beast of the sea. We talked about uh, uh, him as the conqueror, right? This is uh, detailed in Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, and, and also Revelation chapter 11, which is known, which is he's titled the beast there. That's the first usage of that, that word. And then we have the beast of the earth, which we talked about at length uh, last week, right? We have been going through uh, questions about this chapter, although we, we've been kind of going through it line by line, but we've been doing it in reference to three particular questions. Who or what is the beast of the earth? We address that. How is the perseverance of the saints meant to be understood in this passage? This is not talking about a theological uh, uh, tradition, um, but this is talking about the saints at this particular time, um, you know, kind of enduring these particular things, especially from this beast. And what is the mark of the beast, right? So for review from last week, again, the second beast is kind of the prophet of this group, right? Uh, the prophet that is going to uh, seek to legitimize this first beast. He has the same attitude, the same conduct, the same nature as this first beast. And due to his ministry, so-called, um, he will deceive the entire world to follow after this first beast. So much so he does supernatural things. This is not a technological thing, right? This, these are supernatural things, but these things are incomplete, right? Because the message that he proclaims is going to be against God, against Christ. Because of this, the whole world will fall and be enamored with the first beast, right? Let's go ahead and continue in Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 and following, or 16 to 18, rather. 
Verses 11, uh, verses 16 and following, excuse me. It says, and he causes all, the small and great, the rich and poor, the free and slaves to be given a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads. And he decrees that no one will be able to buy or sell except the one who has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for that number is a man, and his number is 666. We will not get to the last part right here. That's for next week, Lord willing. By the way, let me close this. That is for next week. For, for this week, we will focus on these couple of sentences here. So what is the mark of the beasts? Well, before we uh, uh, answer this question in toto uh, from the text, there are a bunch of supplementary questions. By the way, I, I think you can only spend about maybe 10 minutes. If you, if you type mark of the beast, either in the YouTube search engine or in the uh, Google search engine, oh my, right? So there's a couple of supplementary questions we have to ask, right? We'll answer the question, what is the mark of the beast? But there's also some supplementary questions, right? Because if we answer it, you know, people will come up and say, yeah, well, what about dot, dot, dot? What about dot, 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 right? So one, will the church see the beast? That is the first one. Will they see the rise of this antichrist? I believe that this text answers this question. Okay. We'll talk about that later. Two, is the mark of the beast a microchip or COVID-19? By the way, all of these questions come from almighty Google and YouTube. So we have to answer these because these are out in the ether. You know what I'm saying? We have to answer these questions. Because right? if I haven't met them, I promise you, you will. What is the significance of the number 666? What is that? Is the mark of the beast to be understood metaphorically? or spiritually, that is mystically? Is it possible to take the mark of the beast spiritually? Which we'll talk about today. And is 666 the Emperor Nero? Again, this is from another theological tradition, but I think it merits some, I think it merits some, some examination. You know what I'm saying? Because this is, this is out here, especially within the realm of uh, academia and things like that. If you read some of the commentaries, you'll see this, this kind of this explanation. Okay. Speaking of YouTube, let's look at some of the titles. Uh, if you type the, uh, uh, the mark of the beast in the search engine, some of the titles that come up. For example, uh, Morgan Freeman decodes the mark of the beast. Even Morgan Freeman jumps in on this. That's kind of it. We'll talk about more Morgan Freeman next week. Um, China is setting up the world for the mark of the beast. Now, China is somewhat of a concern, right? Is China on the tip of the is China at the tip of the spear and setting up the mark of the beast? We might get shut down on YouTube for this, but whatever. Um, Melchizedek's prophecy, the mark of the beast, important message by somebody. I'm not even going to try to try to pronounce his name, but apparently he was he's important. Right. And he uh, this individual I actually watched his. He ties the mark of the beast to, to Melchizedek. Uh, Hebrews, Genesis. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. Bring it on. Mark of the beast. Yeah. <laughs> There it is. So apparently this individual believes that the church will be at this particular time because of the title. Can you take the mark of the beast accidentally? That, that's, an actual, that's an actual YouTube video. Now, it could be clickbait, you know. But nevertheless, 
That's the title. And then lastly, is COVID, is the COVID-19 vaccine the mark of the beast? Uh-oh. So, so we've looked at titles on YouTube or MeTube, right? Let's look at some of the commentators. I'm, again, I'm having fun with this topic. This is kind of cool. Um, let's look at some of the comments from the commentators here and see uh, what we what we can see here. I know this. I know it's small. I get it. I'm going to read it to you. Okay. Don't don't. I'm sorry. Okay? I didn't want to make more slides than I needed to. Here we go. The, that is the name or the number is so incredible and so indelibly indelibly it described either on the hand or on the forehead as to show that he who bear it permitted to be the beast or pertained it to the beast and was subject to his authority as a slave to his master or soldier to his commander applied to the papacy the meaning is that there would be some mark of distinction some indelible signs something which something which would designate the entire certainty those persons who belong to it and who were subject to it. It is hardly necessary to say that in the point of fact that has eminently characterized the papacy, all possible care has been taken to designate with accuracy those who belong to that communion. And all over the world, it is easy to distinguish those who render allegiance to the papal power. So according to Albert Barnes, this individual, this commentator here, he believes that the mark of the beast is the papacy connected to Roman Catholicism, right? Which would make sense because most individuals uh, have this have this belief that the Antichrist is, is the Pope, right? And the mark is the papacy. John Gill. John Gill says this, the same is that, uh, uh, that some received the mark in one place and some in another, that those who were obliged to receive the mark on the right hand seemed to be the clergy, such who entered into holy orders, who lifted their right hand and swore and vowed allegiance to the Pope and testified that they were ready to defend and support his religion and interests, either in an ecclesiastical sense asked to be in any church office or perform any church service to say mass, hear confession, give absolution, sell pardons and indulgences, or in a civil sense, as to trade, to exercise merchandise. And this was forbidden by several popish councils and synods in the Lateran Council under Pope Alexander. So again, his association is the papacy and Roman Catholicism. Right, even bringing up some examples throughout the centuries of some popes and what they did, um, and try and tying it back to uh, Revelation. Ever says this: that the mark of the beast may represent the persecutions of papal Rome as contrasted with those of pagan Rome in previous verses, or this symbol may represent some of these those modern devices by which men's hearts are turned. From God, such as new semi-religious schools of thought that strive for the empire of men's minds or the customs of modern trade. How about uh, Bridgeway? It says, but whereas the seal placed on God's people is that of the living God, the seal placed on the ungodly is that of the human rebel who fights against God. It is the number 666 is that of man, not God. It is a human number, for it falls short of the perfect divine number, 777. The Antichrist wants to be God, but he must fall, for he is only a man. <clears throat> so uh, they would say that the perfect number is, is seven, right? God completed the earth in seven days. Since God is a triune God, each one represents this number, 777. Um, you have somewhat three individuals here, the dragon, right? The beast of the earth, the beast of the sea, they fall short of that number. And that number is 666, right? Okay. Let's look at Willie B's favorite commentator. 
You know who he is. Yeah. Or they all signify the same thing, that they may they may make an open profession of their subjection and obedience to the papacy, which is receiving the mark in their forehead, and that they oblige themselves to use all their interest, power, and endeavor to promote the papal authority, which is receiving the mark on their right hands. We are told that Pope Martin V, in his bull, added the Council of Constance, prohibits Roman Catholics from suffering any heretics to dwell in their countries or to make any bargains, use any trades, bear any civil offices, which is a very clear interpretation of this prophecy. So he's, he is basically saying that this indeed um, is the papacy, just like all of the other ones, um, with the exception of possibly F.B. Myers. He kind of entertains that thought, but he leans more about economics and trusting in economics. The next uh, uh, individual is a person who uh, is known by the name of Dr. Michael Brown. Dr. Michael Brown has been around for quite some time. He is a, uh, a, a kind of the a, a go-to expert um, in Hebrew and uh, Semitic languages. Um, he's, he's a charismatic, okay? um, but he weighs in about uh, his observation of the mark of the beast. So let's hear from uh, this individual. When a believer gets the mark of the beast, well, I don't believe that a believer will get the mark of the beast. I don't believe that a believer will sell his soul or will sell her soul if they're truly devoted to Jesus. Now, what if someone did that and realized they sinned grievously and asked God to forgive them? That's between them and God. But I want to make this more practical. Rather than speculate about the future, I want to make this more practical. Isn't there pressure on us every day in a spiritual sense to receive the mark of the beast? You know what I'm saying? Isn't there pressure on us every day to sell our soul for human popularity, to sell our soul for a promotion at work, to sell our soul to advance in our career, to sell our soul to be accepted by friends. In other words, the world is constantly saying, compromise your conviction, sacrifice to Caesar, bow down to the God of the Savior, get the mark of the beast. I'm talking spiritually, metaphor. This is what the world is telling us every day. And then you will be one of us. Then you can buy and sell, then you can eat and drink, then you can prosper. Come on, the only way to get ahead in your line of business is to lie. Come on, the only way to get ahead in this movie career is to take your clothes off. Come on, the only way to get a scholarship at that school is to tone down your faith. Come on, the only way to get people coming back to your church is not to preach against sin. There's always this push all the time. It's not as dramatic as a Christian in the first century being brought before Caesar, being brought before the Roman emperor and telling them sacrifice to Caesar or die. And these Christians died. What would happen if sacrifice to Caesar? That would be the same thing as someone getting the mark of the beast, wouldn't it? It would be a denial of the faith. And Jesus said, if we deny him, he'll deny us. But Rather long clip, the reason I'm playing all of these things is for the untrained eye. I know that, that that's not any of us in this room. But for the untrained eye, a person could be very compelled to believe this because we have an individual, you know, he has 4K film. You know what I'm saying? He is a renowned scholar. He's written tons of books, right? Um, sounds like he knows what he's talking about. A person could watch this or even read any of the things that I just mentioned previously and go, yeah, that makes sense, right? But is that true? Without even looking at the text, they may buy into just concepts and ideas without going to the text, just assuming that this person it knows what they're talking about. There is a claim that the beast, which is commonly referred to the Antichrist, is the Emperor Nero. We will discuss this claim next week. This, this, this requires an entire lecture. 
Right? Well, enough pleasantries. Let's go ahead and get to the text and examine this here. It says that he causes all, the small and the great, the rich and the poor, the free and the slaves, to be given a mark on their right hands or on their forehead. This uh, and uh, Kai is the sentence that starts off here, this conjunction. Um, when reading this conjunction, it indicates that John is still writing about not the first beast, but the second one. Okay. How do we know this? Again, verse 16, and it was given to him to give breath to the image of the beast so that the image of the beast would even speak and cause many as do not to worship not to worship the image and be killed and he causes all this links this 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 previous thought with the preceding thought that's getting ready to come up here so we know that we're talking about the same individual we talked about last week okay that this second beast this this so-called prophet who's valid who's validating this false messiah is going to cause all to receive this mark. Then John writes again that he causes, he works all. Then John begins to describe the scope and quality of the people that this second beast influences. We just read previously last week in several verses that the whole world becomes enamored, right? And John details the quality, the type of people that are enamored by this that will take the mark concerning influence he writes those that are small and those that are great not like small in height right but small in influence okay so the common person and dignitaries those who have authority and influence over places they will take the mark okay Concerning material resources and possessions, those the rich and the poor, those who have a lot and those who do not, right? Maybe perhaps uh, as we read forward that no one will be able to buy or sell or trade, right? That would be associated, that could possibly be associated with that, okay? that the rich want to be in the ends, right? They want to uh, 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 be connected, well-funded, and the poor don't want to be shut out, right? And concerning social status, those who are free and those who are slaves. So, so the free, the free ones, and those who are slaves, the, the ones who are slaves. So the ones who uh, have the ability to roam about and the ones who are subject to others. John D. uses and details this language to talk about the scope of this man's influence and the people who are going to take the mark. There is not going to be anyone excluded from this. Okay? This also addresses the statement or the question, can one take the mark of the beast accidentally? The answer is no. <laughs> that those who take the mark will do so of their own volition. They will, they will become enamored with the beast. They will see his power. They will see his influence. They will, they will be captivated by the second beast and they will willingly put their hand on their forehead to the beast and take the mark. It will not be, oh my gosh, what have I done? They will know exactly what they've done. Okay? And they will know why they've done it. The second beast will persuade or cause all those to receive a mark. Let's talk about this word mark for a second. The word mark is karaagma, okay? This word occurs eight times in the Greek scriptures, okay? The most frequent 
uh, uh, place where this word is found, ironically, is the book of Revelation. Okay. It is translated as image, like a picture um, or, or something like that, or a mark. Uh, we actually see this usage, too, in the book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 29, as well. Uh, this is uh, Paul at the Areopagus in Mars Hill, and he's talking to uh, uh, all of the philosophers, the, the, the Greek philosophers around there and making a case for the unknown God being the true God the living God. It says, for we, for we are also his offspring. Being God's offspring or being God's children, <clears throat> then we should not think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone or an image fashioned by human art and imagination. Paul giving the discourse here that, that, that the gods that they had were fashioned by their own mind, by their own design. And Paul making uh, the case very succinctly that that God, the living God, is not fashioned by any any material object that you can see or that you possess here on earth. He's not fashioned by man's imagination. That word image is this word here. It carries with the design and craftsmanship, right? The word originates from two uh, Greek words, um, or I'm sorry, from I'm sorry, from one Greek word, karas, meaning uh, like trench, okay, like like something you dig, like a trench. This image, this mark, is more likely something that's that's entrenched on the skin. Like, like a brand of some type, okay? Some would claim that it's a tattoo, but I don't, I, don't, I don't think it's that. I think it's more of like a brand or maybe even like, a, like scarification. People who uh, uh, scar their skin on purpose with different designs and things. I spared you the pictures, okay? I looked at them and said, ah, I won't put these up there for you. I don't want people to lose their coffee. <laughs> But it's entrenched in the skin, scarification. So it's probably more likely like a brand or an entrenched image will be on the right side of the hand or on the forehead. This is not talking about a barcode. Okay? You've seen the images. You know what I'm talking about. Okay? This is not a barcode. This is very primitive. Okay, this is not technological. This is not this is not a, a technological advance. This is very primitive. Okay. Kind of think of it like this. Like you steer, like you brand cows or steer. This is this is probably more likely, and notice it's there's a, a little entrenchment here, right? I'm not saying this is the mark, so it'll look like this, right? So when we talk about the mark of the beast, we're talking about something that's entrenched on the skin, a brand or a scar of some type that has a design, okay? In any event, let's continue. He causes all the small and the great, the rich and the poor, the free and the slaves to be given a mark or an entrenchment on their right hands or on their foreheads. He decrees that no one will be able to buy or sell except the one who has this entrenchment, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. Again, he decrees that no one will be able to buy or sell except the one. Again, Don tells the reader the purpose of the result of this mark using the word uh, henna, okay? this clause here. So this leads to this. This is the reason why. This is the reason why this mark is going to be placed on the right hand or on the forehead of individuals with the result that no one will be able to buy or sell in the marketplace. Okay? 
This mark one has on them, not anyone, may taste, okay, will be able to participate in commerce. So people will be able to see this. This is a visible thing. This is not running your hand over a scanner. That's not what this is talking about. That one will physically see this on their forehead or on their right hand, the person who is buying or selling. They will have to show them this image, okay? Just by way of aside, those who don't take the mark will not be able to, to participate in commerce. They will not be given any food. They will not be given any resources. They will not be given any water. They will not be given any housing. They won't be given anything. This underscores why individuals who don't take the mark have to be assisted at this time. They will be hiding in homes. They will be hiding in caves. They will, be, they will have to have been brought food. They may even have to take food from somewhere. Okay? Again, this is why it's important when Jesus uh, uh, talks about the sheep and the goats. When did we visit you? Right? Um, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. Right. That that's that's why this that's why he says this. Okay? It's because this time, those who don't take the mark, it, they're going to be cut off from everything, everything. Okay? John's from John's point of view, he sees that they will have two options. They will be they will have the nut, the name of the first beast. Again, remember the second beast is the one that gives glory, glory so-called acknowledgement to the first beast, right? He's to legitimize and validate his, his position. Or they will have the number of his name, one of the two, right? Either the name of the beast or the number of his name, okay? Again, in Revelation chapter 13, where we're at right now, verses 11 and 12, Again, it talks about this, right? And I saw another beast coming up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, but he spoke like a dragon. He exercised all the authority of the first beast on his behalf and compelled the earth and those who live on it to worship the first beast, okay? And whose fatal wound was healed. So they, they will have his name of the first beast on, the, on their forehead or on their right hand. And when they give glory to the first beast, ultimately, they're giving glory to the dragon, right? Who has established this uh, unsanctioned, literally satanic kingdom. Okay? Again, we don't have Satan worshipers. Uh, uh, this in this time, folks, they're they're a bunch of jokers. Okay, they're, these people are clowns. Okay, right? this is when the real business happens here. Okay, so what is the mark of the beast? Well, the mark of the beast is a type of brand or possibly a scar that affirms the allegiance or the alliance to the first beast. That is that is the point of the mark of the beast. That's very plain Jane, okay? Will the church see the beast? That is the first one. Well, if we look at the context surrounding the passage, the answer is, is no. First of all, the context is talking about those who dwell on the earth. We've seen this word before, right? It's talking about unbelievers during this period of time. This is not discussing the church aid saints. Now, we, we, don't, we, we submit that there are times of persecution throughout the world. There, no, one, no one's denying that. But this particular time here, there's a special focus on those specifically who dwell on the earth and their enamoring of this beast. Okay. This is not discussing church age saints okay, or the church economy. 
Is the mark of the beast the microchip? No. It's not. As we mentioned before, the, the word itself, image, karagma, means entrenchment. So it's not talking about uh, something being embedded in your skin. This is a visible, physical uh, 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 mark, right? And again, one will be, not be able to buy or sell without it. This also speaks to the primitive nature of this time. We're not talking about Google is not around, folks. It's not going to be around here. Amazon's not going to be around. Netflix is not going to be around. No one is not going to be watching Netflix. No one's not going to be watching Amazon Prime. This is this is this is a throwback time. OK, remember, everyone has coalesced in the Middle East here. They, 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 you know, a third a third of the planet is torched. You know what I'm saying? The, the rivers and streams, uh, most of them are all gone. They're poisoned. They're bad. The ground is bad. The water's bad. Everything is bad. And the only place that's really fertile is this particular area right here. Okay? Australia's gone. U.S. is gone. South America's gone. Everything's torched. Okay? The context of the passage, too, in Revelation 13 talks about the first beast as well, the conqueror. In order for this to be true, there has to be a conqueror that, that enamors the entire world. I don't see that anywhere. And certainly not with our leader. The second beast persuades all human beings at this time, no matter the status, position, or influence. These are people who will willingly, it's you, it's not like individuals will be like fighting. Oh, oh, don't take it. Ah! No, you know, that's that's that that's pure flick stuff. Okay. No, people are going to willingly put their hand or their forehead, they're gonna willingly give it to him. Okay. No matter the status, no matter the position, and no matter the influence to take the brand or the entrenchment of this beast, which signifies the allegiance and approval of the first beast essentially being God on earth. That is the that is that is the that is the that is the coup de grace, that is the punchline. They acknowledge this person being deity incarnate. He is the ultimate idol, folks. Okay? And they will place their mark on, his, on their right hand or on their forehead. Okay? So there are still some supplementary questions we have left that we have to answer concerning this this particular discourse is what is the significance of the number 666 what does that mean All right i'll give you a little hint this is the only time that this number shows up in the entire bible okay so this just tells you that this is indicative this is significant of this particular time period okay we can't find this number anywhere else other than this text right here okay so we'll talk about that is the mark of the beast to be understood metaphorically, spiritually, or mystically? Now, we, we, we already addressed this issue. I believe it is a physical sign, but we could still, we have, there's still some loose ends we have to tie up here, okay? So we will talk about that. And is 666 the Emperor Nero? One individual who is convinced of this is Morgan Freeman, right? Is indeed 666 the Emperor Nero? during the time that he lived in the first century or pre-first century really right in his persecution of the saints does his life and his activity parallel the events that are described in revelation 13. Okay. 
we will talk about all that next week. Okay. Rest assured, final comments, rest assured the mark of the beast uh, is not talking about a microchip. Okay, so if you go on YouTube and look at the mark of the beast and see that, you'll know you can throw that out. Okay. Nor is it talking about technological advances, super alien civilizations. Um, you can throw all that out. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and pray and then we will close. Thank you, Lord, that your word is clear. It is so clear what this is that we don't have to pontificate and 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 we can we can certainly examine, ask questions as we should of the text. But where do we find the answers to these questions? It is in the text itself. It is very, very clear and obvious what this particular passage is all about. It's all about this particular time period in the great affliction and how the world will be in an upheaval concerning this beast, this beast of the sea, this beast of the earth, and ultimately uh, uh, the dragon's activity um, coming to coalesce in the world. We thank you, Father, that you've given to us even the method of how to read the scriptures from the text itself, to take the words plainly at face value. We thank you, Lord, for the understanding of that. Pray, Lord, that we would continue to think about this and ponder this. We thank you, Lord, that we don't have to, as the body of Christ, experience any of this. But, Lord, may we continue to be motivated to tell individuals of your grace so that they may escape such dangers. And ultimately, the one that is coming um, later on as we uh, examine your, your, your book. We love you so much, Lord, for it's in your son's name. Amen.